Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about um, a comment that I saw in my last video. Now I've responded to that comment, but I kind of feel like I owed it to that person to go into a little bit more detail about essentially why I think that way and, and, and why I essentially uh, suggested those things. Now, um, it really stems from Tony Z, Quanta, and the 90-10 split economy that we have in Star Citizen, or the 90-10 split economy that CIG proposed to be in the game. So, um, I just want to say right off the bat, if you guys like uh, theory crafting videos like this, uh, hit the like button and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Um, I love delivering these videos for you guys. I love the conversation and uh, making videos about stuff that the community is into. Okay, so now let's get into this video. Um, so right off the bat, uh, if you're a new player, you're probably wondering what is the 90 10 split economy that I'm talking about. Well, early on, CAG proposed that Star Citizen's economy would not be a player economy or an uh, NPC economy. It would be split uh, between the two groups 90% NPCs and 10% players. Okay? So essentially, um, the the NPCs would do essentially ninety percent of the the things, and the players would uh, account for ten percent. Now, uh, as the game is being developed more, this is more of an ideological fact, and not really something that is quite quantifiable. Now. The way that it is currently implemented, because Quanta is implemented, believe it or not, uh, to a, a small extent in game, is that these the the ninety uh, ten split economy affects the prices of items in stores. So essentially, uh, there will be like a base price that will account for 90% of the market value that is determined by the NPCs and the players determine 10% of the market value. So that's why you will see if you sell too many of the same item to a store, the price will go down on that item. That is quantum working as the 90%, 10% economy working. This is what was proposed by Tony Z. Uh, the, the second part of that is the, the missions that spawn in space where you have um, NPC beacon missions that you can go to. And these are actually pretty fun missions. I've played some of these. Essentially, a pilot will be attacking an NPC in space and you will essentially have to go and protect that NPC. And the way that uh, Tony Z and the team described it is that there are probabilities of where these things will spawn around space stations um, to kind of simulate traffic. Now, uh, you may be thinking that this is changing because CIG has essentially changed the location of certain um, things in game uh, with the new mining update where things spawn in different locations now. And I suggested that a while ago because it creates trade routes. So um, it's kind of a good indicator that this this thought process wasn't um, in line before when they had suggested the probabilities. Because if you think about it, 
the way they presented the update to us was kind of something that, you know, was a rebalance based on player feedback and not something that was initially intended as a part of the 90-10 split economy. And I uh, early on suggested that because it would um, proprietize trade lanes and would play into the probabilities of various things happening in certain locations. So, in my opinion, it gets a little bit complicated when you start to physicalize what the NPCs and the quanta are doing and what their impact is on the economy in the game. So, what I suggested was that the Star Citizen's economy be more of a Venn diagram where you would have the NPCs doing their thing and the players doing their thing and they would meet in the middle and there would be crossover. Now, I would never suggest that Star Citizen be a player-driven economy because th that's just not possible. Um, planets like Archcorp have billions of uh, residents. There's no way that there's no way for the player base to be responsible for providing all of the food and the materials and everything that all of those people need to survive. There's no way the players would be able to be responsible for that. Um, so it's obvious that Star Citizen could never be a 100% player driven economy. But the issue I had with the 90-10 split economy is that uh, with the NPCs responsible for 90% um, of everything that's happening, including what the players are doing, it will feel a lot like the things that the players are doing don't really matter. And that's not just my opinion. If you play the game regularly, you will get that feeling. There are so many people who play Star Citizen and pick it up and they ask themselves, what do you do in this game? What is the point of playing this game? This game is boring. A lot of these comments stem from the fact that players don't feel like they can impact the game in a meaningful way. They don't feel like the things that they do have value. And so I said from the very beginning, in a game, especially in an MMO, everything you do needs to have value. And making gameplay loops, gameplay mechanics that make it feel like everything you do have value is where the economy comes from. Now, I think Tony Z is a good developer. Um, I think he, he knows what he's doing in terms of the code. And I think he's excited about the economy, but I think CIG should hire an actual economist to build the back end of Star Citizen's economy and then have Tony Z code it and actually uh, implement whatever this economist comes up with. Now, I'm not saying that it needs to be the, you know, the craziest, most dynamic thing in the world, but it is difficult to do when CIG is rolling out, you know, a star system every 10 years. Let's say CIG gets to the point when they can roll out a star system every year or every quarter. It will still take years and years and years, decades even, to get all the star systems in game. How would you simulate an economy of planets that aren't in the game yet. You would have to have the NPCs simulate a hundred percent of that economy because there's no players to simulate the other 10%. Now, I don't know if this is making any sense, but basically what I'm saying is that if this, if Star Citizen economy is a 90-10 split economy, 
where the players account for 10% of the economy and the NPCs account for 90% of the economy. And the economy is comprised of 800 star systems, which we only have one of. The players are actually accounting for 1% of the economy, not 10. So until we get 100 systems, it is going to feel like you're impacting almost nothing. <laughs> That's why it feels like we're not accomplishing anything. That's why it feels like we're not really impacting very much because we only have one star system. So we can only impact the economy 1% and the NPCs are currently impacting the economy 99%. So as star systems roll out, that percentage will go up, but you will have to but the, but the problem you run into is that you will have to simulate that economy for the NPCs. And the CIG does not know. <laughs> they have already changed the law of the Pyro and presumably Nick's system because CIG wants to drive traffic to those star systems, which essentially means it's the same thing with the the resource division in stanton right now that type of system where the economy is divided in hot spots so to say where you have you know reasons for economic um diversity comes from knowing what is there <laughs> you know um, because we have the Stanton system, CIG can move these resources around to create a reason for players to go to these different planets. So if you're going to apply that, which you should, which you have to, if you want to make a real economy, you need to know what's there. And right now, CIG doesn't know what's there. So that essentially means that quanta is not being simulated across 100 star systems i mean again this is just a this is just one plus one equals two <laughs> it's pretty obvious that for cig to fully implement quanta they need all 100 star systems to be in the game <laughs> or they need to know what resources is being produced by all these 100 star systems. They have to be able to say that this star system is producing X and that star system is producing Y and this NPC is going to this star system to get that and trade that. They need to know all these things. They need to map all these things. They need to create that governance and then they can simulate it. You can't simulate something that's not there. It's just a matter of fact. This it, again, it's not an opinion. Quanta can exist with just one star system, and so that's why, in my opinion, if you create this Venn diagram style economy where the players are accountable for one hundred percent of the players are accountable for, and the NPCs are accountable for one hundred percent of what the NPCs are accountable for, and then they meet in the middle for missions and reputation it's a seamless transition when you add a new star system you don't have to rely on creating the back end for each planet before you release it you can decide hey wait a minute i all of a sudden don't want terror to be an epicenter for x i want terror to be an epicenter for y and if you change your mind like CIG is doing with Pyro, it doesn't affect the simulation. But if you have to wait for the, the star system to come out, you cannot make the simulation. So that's why a lot of people are, are, are probably sitting here asking, where's Tony Z? Where's Quanta? Why haven't we seen more of it? They're probably in the background trying to figure out how they're going to simulate something that they have no idea what they want it to be. <laughs> Essentially, 
Imagine sitting down, you have a hundred planets in front of you and you have law for these 100 planets and you want to create incentives for players to go to the farthest edges of this universe i mean you look at stanton and it has everything it's had everything for years so what is going to incentivize players to go out to these places well crafting for one and so this is the the other reason why i think a split economy is so interesting to me because you can essentially say, okay, you have items that the NPCs make, items that are simple like um, guns and med pens and all that stuff. And I, again, I'm not saying that players shouldn't be able to craft med pens. Maybe they can. But you have dedicated items that the NPCs make you have dedicated items that the players make in craft in crafting and that way it gives so much value to crafting because the items you can only get from players and it incentivizes crafters to go after those really valuable items instead of you know just crafting something that's simple they can focus their time on crafting something that's more complex that will they can that is more complex and unique and that will uh, um, kind of command those higher dollar amounts because they're just better items and then uh, of course I've talked about this in my crafting video you have the very best the rarest items only items that you can find in game but you go back to uh, um, this crafting system uh, it, it, in this uh, you know Venn diagram style economy and it lends itself to um, kind of not being reliant on quanta and again the 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 quanta system in my opinion is generating missions so what does that look like well it looks exactly like it does now <laughs> to to be plain to be simple quanta fully implemented let's say for let's stop for a second stop the conjecture stop the theory crafting black and white on paper if cig came up with the economy let's say they made um a recipe for the entire 100 star system economy where all the resources are going to be everything and then they simulate it with uh, the NPCs what does that look like to the players well what it looks like to the players is exactly what it looks like now <laughs> you know <laughs> nothing would change you would have NPCs that spawn missions like they do now and you would accept those missions and you would help the NPCs. What actually changes is the interactions you have with those NPCs. Dialogue, talking to those NPCs, helping them do more detailed things like uh, a mission that becomes more detailed kind of more story infused content but the the actual situations that gets that that spawns these interactions that's not going to be any different than you you know getting a a help beacon oh a pirate is attacking me come help me open your mission tab that experience is fundamentally going to be the same when quanta is um initiated and to me, I feel like um, that's something that CIG should look at. I feel like having this, this split economy where the players are responsible for 100% of what they do and the NPCs are 100% responsible for 100% of what they do and they just meet in the, midst, in the middle for these missions for reputation, for 
various other content to me it solves that problem again i'm not saying that this is set in stone i'm not suggesting that cig do this this is just an idea um just food for thought to kind of um understand the situation that we're actually in with quanta because again it is an exciting concept it's a very interesting concept but what does that look like in the real world what does it look like in the real world for quanta to be with us so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below am i completely off base um do you guys think that cig i mean again i don't in, i don't know what's going on at uh cig i'm not a dev i'm just a player i just think they have a real uphill battle if they stick to this 90 10 uh split percentage economy situation with quanta i feel like if they want to do quanta and they divide the economy between players and npcs they it it, it makes the things that players do more valuable it makes the things that npcs do more valuable and again players and npcs will still be able to meet in the middle to to do missions and have reputation and the game will essentially feel the same as it is now basically the system basically what i'm saying is the system that we have right now is the system that i'm suggesting <laughs> it's the, it's fundamentally the same thing the same system that we have right now is the same system that i'm suggesting the only difference is that it can be more dynamic if they stick with this 90 10 split and we wait for quanta i feel like the devs will have an uphill battle trying to decide what these star systems should be focusing on trying to decide what they should make trying to decide what reasons players would have to go these places again i feel like it would be easier to decide that once the players are in these star systems and are, are, are interacting with it once cig can actually start making them they can decide oh, okay hey this is what we want for that and uh, yeah i i again uh, i we haven't seen tony z in a while I hope we can hear from him soon. I, I think it would be huge if we can get a panel from him at Citizen Con this year. I know Citizen Con this year is going to be live and in person. I really hope we can hear Tony Z talk about Quanta and the economy because I want to know how they're going to solve this problem. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you guys just think they'll just they'll figure it out? Uh, do you think that, you know, my idea has a little bit of merit? Uh, are you concerned? Are you not concerned? Um, again, I think uh, that person's comment was really interesting. They essentially commented that, um, you know, uh, the players can work for the NPCs. And again, I'm not saying that they can't. Um, I absolutely think that is a good way to start, but I feel like it is always gonna feel more impactful if you if you if if you can see the difference that you're making in game. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. This is really fascinating stuff to me. I love this stuff. As a theory crafter, this is what I this is what really you know excites me i i love the game i play the game all the time the game is exciting on its own theory crafting the game is exciting put them together i'm having a blast uh you guys have been knocking it out of the park on the videos um liking sub subscribing it really makes a difference it really helps me out i appreciate you guys more than anything you guys are amazing uh, this cra this channel is growing so fast and it's all because of you um so thank you so like i always say in my videos like this video if you like it subscribe if you want to see more and i will see you guys in the next one salute